My name's Neil Chesterton. I'm a vet from New Zealand, and one of my real interests is achieve, helping farmers achieve really good cow flow. Because the end result is my other interest, less lameness. But in this last part three, I'm just going to show how ideas on how you can work with the cow and not against her. If you work with her, one end result will be good cow flow. The whole job becomes interesting and enjoyable. So the four things we need to know about cow flow are they are creatures of habit, their milking order is different to their walking order or their entry into the yard order. The third thing is we're going to talk about dominance behavior in cows. And the last thing, the fact that you know everything about anyway, cows are followers, but we've got to use it. Let's start with the fact that they're creatures of habit. Cows like a routine. Every dairy farmer knows they like a routine. Their ability to learn routines is amazing. It always amazes me how quickly heifers will learn a new routine. All their life they've been outside in paddocks. Suddenly we now want them to come inside, walk through a, a, a holding yard, go into a milking parlor, get milked, walk out, turn around corners and go back to the paddock. And yet they learn so quickly. In actual fact, I think they learn quicker than us humans. It only takes two or three times and heifers will learn to go through a milking parlor if you work and do it the same every time. An amazing thing, it's, it was a light bulb moment when I discovered that milking order is different to the order that they come into the milking yard. I used to think it was the same until I started examining these things. Cows enter the holding yard or the collecting yard in a fairly set order. They have a peck order. We used to call it a peck order, didn't we? They come in in that order. To my surprise, they come out of the milking parlor in a different order. When I told my farmers this, they used to say, typical vets don't know anything. They all knew that often the last cow that, or you know this if you're a farmer, the last cow that comes into the holding yard often is in the second or third row. They change and you knew that. The light bulb moment to me was most of our problem happens when we don't give them enough space to change. My farmers, some of them used to think they could speed up cow flow by pushing the cows tight. In actual fact, what I realized was happening, when they pushed up tight, they can't change from that entrance order into a milking order. And so I worked out how much space they need to change. Let's have a look at this video here of one of my farmers who had poor cow flow until he discovered himself that they needed time to change. On the day this happened, he, his assistant broke his arm. So the poor farmer was left to milk 600 cows by himself through a 35 aside herringbone. What he did, he let the cows off the feed pad to come into the cow shed and he didn't lock them in before he started milking. He just opened the gate, the cows were coming out the feed pad, he went into the milking pit, started the machines and started milking the first ones to arrive. There were 300 cows in the first herd and this is what I saw. I went with my video camera to see what was happening. Look how the earlier cows have come in. It's a little bit jerky, but don't worry about that. The earlier cows have come in, and the later cows are walking right through them through a horrible design cow shed, and the cow flow is almost perfect. Not exactly perfect, but so much better than when he put them all in the yard first and then started milking them. His assistant had broken his arm and couldn't help him, so he had to do it all by himself but the cow flow was good. See how they're changing position? Look at the Jersey cow in the middle, just standing there for a long time before she decides to go forward. The cows start with an entry order. They need space to change into a milking order. And so your big Frisian cows in the UK need at least 1.8 square meters per cow 
in the holding area. So that was our second point. They need space to change their order. The third thing is that cows have a dominance order as well. I used to think that the dominant cows were the ones at the front, but it's not true. The ones at the front are leader cows, but often they're lower order cows. The dominant cows push them, and guess what? Behind the dominant cows, there are followers. The interesting thing in the studies that we did in New Zealand was that dominant cows are spread throughout the herd. It's true that many of them are up the front together, but right to the back group, there are also dominant cows. The interesting thing that we've learned about this is that if we, on the, as the cows are coming to the milking parlour, from the, either from their free stalls or loose housing or from the paddock, if you push the back cows, they won't go any faster than what the dominant cows ahead of them will allow them. So all we do by pushing them is they compact tighter and do foot damage. So that third behaviour, understanding that the dominant cows will only walk at their own pace, causes us to think, well, let's just walk at the pace that the herd wants to go rather than trying to make it faster. It's not going to go faster anyway. The last behaviour of cows that we can work with rather than against is the knowledge that cows are followers. And this is awesome because if we can get one cow going, we know, you know, already you know this stuff, the others will follow. Some people try to push them to go in, but the beauty about the herd is if you let them follow in their own order, the end result will be better cow flow than if you try to push them. Some cows, if you push them to follow, they don't want to go in that order anyway. They turn around and come back out, like I see so often happening in, in um, dairy sheds. If you allow them to follow at their own order, they'll go in and they'll stay in and the cow flow will get better and better every day. And I've got proof of this in a video, a beautiful video of cows looking first from the side to give you a picture of what was happening, but then from the top to see how they flow in their own chosen order. So here's some cows going in the right-hand side. There's 40 cows going into a bales on the right-hand side maybe a little bit dark in that corner, but you can see how these cows have got space to move through. Then we're going to see from the top what's happening. Here we are looking down. No pressure, no gates pushing. And you watch how cows will come from the left or the right or the back or the front in their particular order. They're swapping order right in front of us, but they're following. We've allowed the first ones to go in voluntarily, and look how they follow. It's a normal behavior that we can work with rather than against by pushing them tight. In this cow shed, they hardly ever come out to get the cows in. The cows choose their order, and there's a thousand cows in this herd. Probably in this herd, there's 500, two herds of 500. They don't come out to get the cows. In the middle there, there's a cow, a white cow. You watch that dominant cow. We can learn about dominance behavior. Right in the middle of the screen, a little bit to the left, behind that brown one, you watch the dominant cow. The others are going at their own pace. She's not going to go first because she likes to go in at 20 past 3 anyway, or something. You watch what she does. The others are going in, she's watching them, and then she starts to show her dominance behavior. She's annoyed by that cow, so she pushes her, comes over, pushes that one over further, follows that one, and look, the other one's starting to go into the milking parlor because she's pushed by the dominant cow. And she's followed by others. So if we just had to summarize the whole point of this thing, of the day that we've had, there's a link between cow behavior, cow flow, stress, and maybe lameness. The end result is lameness. 
you can reduce stress by working with the cow, not against her. So many of my farmers think by pushing them, things will go faster. All it does is cause the stress. The end result of working with cows rather than against them, you don't only just end up with happy cows, but happy people. Milking, instead of being a stressful, noisy thing, becomes an exercise in contentment. Thank you.